What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to unsub, dislike, and report all my videos. And this is a tutorial about how I edited a music video for a band from Australia called Closure in Moscow. Вообще не знаю, кто может получить это там. But they asked me to edit a five minute long music video, and I did, and you can watch that here. You should probably watch that first, because otherwise this video won't make sense. And all I want to do in this video is to give a general overview of how I edited that video. All the way from putting the footage onto the timeline to doing the final analog video effects. Shout out to Rowie. He was the one who actually filmed the band in the studio spaces. The first step was, of course, to listen to the track and give some ideas about what could be shot and what the themes and the overall vibe of the video would be and if there's any particular details that are popping up in my mind that I feel need to be captured on camera. So I put some markers down in Premiere Pro over the track and kind of made some notes. Naturally, my style is pretty biased towards the post-production side of things, so I knew even if I got basic standard footage of a band, then I would still have something to work with and I could probably find a way to make it look interesting. And the key to making this happen is to get a variety of angles. And so looking at the footage here, that's exactly what I got. Although nobody was really moving too much and all the shots were pretty static, I still got lots of different angles and subjects. And Rowe was super awesome because he went ahead and synchronized all the footage to the track already. And so all I had to do was just paste them into the timeline and bam, I'm ready to go. I also color coded all the takes based on the instrument that was being played in that shot and the subject and the band member, just so I could kind of get a visual on what material I had on the timeline as the editing progressed. So the major decision making here is process of elimination. In the end, my general goal is to consolidate all the tracks into just one track on the timeline. And the easiest way to do that is to select all the tracks, right click, and hit nested sequence. I'm joking, that, 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 was, that was a joke. So what I really have to do is I have to watch all the individual takes and cut out the parts that I know aren't going to be in the video, either because they just don't look good, or it's obvious that the player isn't playing their part in that moment, or the singer isn't singing. Um, and by doing this process here, at the first stage of the video, I've already gotten rid of a lot of footage that I don't even have to think about anymore, or waste any creative decision-making energy on. I don't know if that's a thing. Creative decision-making energy. And after this, I'm left with a bunch of holes. And like the game Tetris, I can just begin to flatten all these pieces and parts of the video into one track, or at least begin to consolidate this big stack of tracks into a thinner cake. So really, it's not at all like I'm choosing the best take for a given moment. I'm actually choosing the worst or the most boring takes and deleting them wherever I find them. As I'm editing and deciding what I want to cut, I keep carving down this layered cake of takes into what ultimately should only be the most interesting and dynamic footage. Identifying what is bad and what is good to use is something that kind of just comes from intuition and experience, I guess. A YouTube video can't really teach you how to select that. You just have to edit a bunch of videos yourself for fun and for free, like I have done many times and still do. But I was actually paid pretty well for this, which is good for a change. <laughs> there was a point in this edit where I realized I probably should have, even before I did any eliminating of footage, normalized the white and black levels in each track. I know that the analog video hardware I have is going to be mostly responsible for generating the color in the video, so it was safe to say that I really only needed to work in black and white. 
as well as make the shots consistent. Say there's like a black curtain in the background that needs to look totally black. Uh, then I will drop the black level or lower the shadows to basically swallow those small variations in value that might exist. And that really avoids any artifacts or anything like that later on. I should also mention that this footage was shot in 4K, but I work in a full HD size sequence, which I have my reasons for. One of them being that analog video, of course, is a very small resolution in the digital world. So anything above that is kind of fair game. It's still gonna be compressed down. But the main reason is that it allows me to use that 4K footage and crop in without losing any quality and do some ridiculous keyframed zooms and panning that I've been doing in some of my edits since, well, I think it was, it was really this one that I did in 2021. I found that since well over two years ago when I started doing this, I've gotten better at not having to think so hard about what keyframes to create and how much to zoom in or out. And again, I don't know if this is something that can be really easily explained. It's more just kind of intuition and in looking and seeing what creates the most flow or movement in the video. For certain cuts, I want to create the illusion of a really fast sliding transition. So that means the last frame before a cut will have a position keyframe that kind of displaces the image in one direction. You probably also notice the adjustment layers. Uh, these are where I put a directional blur effect. So I can apply a blur over top of those very short two, one or two frame cuts to have that really fast looking transition. But typically this kind of transition only happens over important percussive hits in the song. And again, I can't really explain which hits are important and which are not. It's just kind of part of your creativity as an editor expressing yourself in the video edit. For the most part, since a lot of this was shot in a black or white studio environment, I didn't really need to do any keying of the background or any roto brushing that I do to an insane extent sometimes because ultimately this footage is already the ideal of what I want to work with. And that meaning clean, solid, white or black background. That's not to say I didn't use Roto Brush 2.0 in After Effects, it was only in very certain moments for specific applications. For example, the screaming head underwater. It was really interesting because although I didn't like the clothing and the environment that this was shot uh, with an action camera, I really liked the movement of the face. So I chose to select only that and have a floating mask effect. There were other details I added like bubbles or waves that I put in the video, which I got from various stock video sources. I also learned a new effect in After Effects. Uh, I wanted to make water ripples happen in the beginning of the song where there's just guitar strings. But I wasn't sure if I was going to actually film the water ripples or find stock footage. But I remembered that there's a wave simulation in After Effects called Wave World that can be used to simulate a dissipating water ripple if you keyframe it correctly. And the grayscale video that this simulator generates can be used as a source for another effect called caustics that will take the variance in the value of that video and use it to distort an underlying image, sort of like how the bottom of a pool is refracted by the waves above. And that effect I used on the illustrations the band sent to me, and it turned out to be a great solution for the beginning of the video. Okay, that was a brief synopsis of the editing process before anything with analog video was involved. This entire stage took me most of my time, as it usually does, because in my opinion, prepping a video to look good with analog effects is more important than the analog video effects themselves, I think. All right, what is going on here? Well, to begin, I have the pre-edited video loaded up in Resolume on my main laptop. 
and the video is being output to a downscaler which is outputting an S video and composite RCA and that is being sent to various devices here that all are being sent to the Roland V4EX and the output of this which happens to be an HDMI conveniently is being sent to the capture card or in other words a USB to HDMI adapter which is being captured by my 10 year old laptop which is just running OBS studio and I'm able to hit record and record the effects in real time and so to demonstrate I can just flip switches here and that will change some of the effects and this right here is responsible for providing a lot of the blown out colors and highlights we can take a look at the Rusty Joe here by Mescalin you can see it's providing a different flavor of effects this configuration of devices I've described vaguely in my Rig Rundown 2.0 and what this allows me to do is have a feedback loop where the video is being processed and visible and what I'm allowed to do with this if I key actually I can show you with this mixer if I turn on uh, Luma key with this turn this knob here I'm able to key out the black or the dark parts and that will only let through the lines which gives a really interesting effect I can also add colorize onto it and change the color of these lines and that was a really cool touch that I had uh, come across when using this in combination with one of the other devices and so essentially I'm able to uh, have two looks that I'm mixing together um, and so that adds another layer of complexity but I could talk all day about this sort of stuff and um, I think it would be a little bit besides the point. So after I've recorded all my takes of analog video effects, it's time for another round of editing. Yes, I edit my videos twice, basically. The first time I'm doing the actual cuts and transitions with the footage of the band. The second time I'm choosing the best analog video effect for that given moment. Analog video effects are pretty random, Sometimes they're hard to rein in, sometimes they have a mind of their own. So in my experience, it's better to record a bunch of different analog video looks for the same edit and then cut between those looks so you have almost like two levels of transitions happening. And I would like to think that baiting between a different analog video look or using it at the same time a transition happens creates for a very engaging and dynamic a live video. I think that this approach is really kind of influenced by my experience with VJing, so that's why I kind of approach it in this way. But again, with the analog video effects and the various takes I've done of those, it's still a process of elimination. And so I did spend quite a bit of time, not as much as editing the transitions, but still a lot of time choosing what analog video effects or best for a certain moment. And lastly, of course, I had to throw an adjustment layer over top of all of it so I could apply Lumetri color and put in a filter and give everything a whole sort of cohesive look that really is like the, the cherry on top. And so that's, that's how I edited this. If you're still watching, especially if you're a band or artist uh, in need of a music video like this, well, you know who to call. I really wanted to illuminate again my process for how this type of uh, project is done and to demonstrate my capabilities. 
That was the primary reason for making this video, to be honest. But of course, I hope you learned something and that you were inspired in some way. Also, if you've been keeping up with me at all on social media, you'll know that earlier this summer, I moved to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And hopefully, I'll get my residence card soon. And when I do, maybe I'll make a, an unscripted sort of log of just me wandering around the city and then glitch it and call it Glitch Vlog 4 because I have three others. So yeah, I'm still getting settled down, uh, but I'm always looking for serious creative work and commissions. I'm also trying to take it easy, but still thinking about what I'm gonna do on this YouTube channel. And I think with my ideas that I'm thinking of, I think there'll be some exciting stuff coming sooner than we think, perhaps. So thanks for watching this video. Have a wonderful day and stay creative.